We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. We are Good morning, CSL Parker. Stand if you are able. Let's sing and know that we are opening. I am open. I am open. I am open. I am open to receive the love in the love in you and me. I am open. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Parker. I feel like we're kind of leaning this way today. Everybody's sitting over here. I, you want to be close to the food. I got it. I got it. That's what it is. So welcome to CSL Parker. I'm David Howard. If I, if I haven't met you yet, I hope to connect with you after the service today. And I just want to say a special welcome. If you're here for the first time, a special welcome to you. But please know that whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And we embrace you in love and hopefully you felt that this morning. Um, so I would like to begin today by uh, us saying our vision and mission statements together. They're up here on the banner. So we affirm our vision. We are a vibrant, nurturing, loving community, welcoming and inspiring all on their spiritual path. And our mission is, we foster the experience of oneness, peace, love, and joy through inspiring Sunday services, classes, workshops, and loving service to the community. And so it is. Now I want to invite Liz Rudberg up to share some announcements with us this morning. announcement girl today. Yay. Um, so, <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> we have a schedule here. Um, so, first and foremost, I know, first of all, good morning, beautiful souls. Um, I know everyone's really good about turning off cell phones, so I don't have to remind you, but there it is. Um, <laughs> and um, so, we have... Um, um, the prayer box. So first of all, we have a group of spiritual practitioners here. We all wear our little white stoles, and there is a prayer box in the back. So if you have a wish upon your heart for something that is going fabulously and you want it to get even better, or if you have a wish upon your heart about something that is maybe a challenge, please put it in the prayer box. And a practitioner will pray on your wish for the week. Um, so that's back in the back. We also have welcome packets if you're here for the first time. If you want to fill out one of those, there's a little card in there. And you'll get on our mailing list and you'll find out about all the fabulous things that are going on here. Um, uh, we have a weekly newsletter that gets emailed out. Um, also, 
I need to extend a humongous, special, heartfelt thank you to Liz and Cliff for this beautiful altar today. I mean, this is just over the top, you guys. It's just gorgeous. So thank you so much for that. Um, the women's ministry has a high tea coming up on uh, December the 7th at the English Tea House. And if you'd like to join us, um, we, I went last year. It is so much fun. And the English Tea House has the most delectable food and tea. And we gather as the women's group and uh, break bread and share stories and um, have just a lovely, heartfelt time together. So um, if you're interested in that, it is December 7th from 11 to 1.30. And there's a place on our website to sign up. Or you can see Jeanette. Yeah. There she is. Um, uh, or Kathleen Henderson or Pam Eichenberger um, has more information about that if you are interested and want to hear more about it. Um, also, the month of November is the month of gratitude. And yay! And we give thanks for all of our abundance and um, celebrate our abundance individually and as a center. Um, and to speak more about that, I'd like to invite um, Bob Duvall to come up and talk to everyone about Thanksgiving. Thanks, Liz. So, hi, I'm the treasurer boy today. So, you have these cards, we put them on the um, uh, chairs. And these cards are for um, notifying us of sharing. Every year we have to put together a budget, of course. Um, even though we believe in abundance, we also believe in stewardship. And that's part of our stewardship program. And so if you've not already, or you would like to do another one uh, to change or to add to or to add to, um, please fill out one of these cards and put it in the offering today. Thank you. Yay, yay, Bob, yay. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to introduce our very own Dr. Vern to come up and talk about this workshop that he's holding on December the 14th called Faith Lift. Oh, and no, I don't have nice. <laughs> Well, thanks, Liz, for doing my announcement. <laughs> Any of you desire a faith lift, come join us on December 14th, a Saturday from 11, 15 to 1, 15 at the Creekside Rec Center, which is where we usually hold our summer picnic. And it is an opportunity to really examine your own individual sense of faith and trust. And I have been guided so far with some really invaluable information that I will be able to share with you that day. It is sponsored by CSO Parker, and I'm giving it as a gift to this community. So there is no fee for that. Now, here's the thing. We're all doing our part, but you need to do yours. What that means is if you plan to attend, please sign up with cslparker.org, and we can put you on the list. I can tell you that seating is limited. So the sooner you sign up, the better chance you have of getting in the door because Liz is going to be guarding the door and will not let anyone in who doesn't have her okay. If you have any questions about that, see me at the education table after this service. The last and next announcement I have is that your education committee has been working diligently to create a 2025 class schedule. And it is, we met for two hours last Sunday, and we, it was like Liz, Joe Albers, and Pam Eichenberger on the committee, and it was 
a challenge, but we think we have most everything correct. These flyers are on the education table, and you can pick those up uh, after service. Thank you, Liz. I'm finished. Yay, Dr. Byrne, yay. Um, uh, additionally, another wonderful thing we have going on is our giving tree, and I'd like to invite um, Sissy Alverson, and also, who's the other person who's coming up? Dave Richardson, there he is. Come on up, tell us all about the giving tree. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody who contributed to Parker's Task Force Food Drive last month. This month, what we're, done, what we're doing is we've adopted two families through Parker Task Force to give them uh, Christmas gifts to people who really can't afford to fill up the stockings themselves. We set up a giving tree over here, which has the list of the little items they need. We'd like each person, if they can, to pick one of those gifts. And we need it sometime over either this coming next Sunday or the Sunday after in a box wrapped up. Uh, and it's something we are looking forward to, to fulfill. And Sissy? So um, there are 30 tags and for humans and pets. There is a cat named Water, so don't think I was drinking when I wrote it up. Um, they also express the desire that we include a, a Christmas card and give our thoughts. Please don't leave any personal information other than your first name. I uh, just want to make sure we're including everything. Got the gift wrap. Um, yeah, so we have until 12-8, the, the Sunday of December 8th to collect unless you're going to drop them by Dave's house before the 13th. So, uh, and please make sure I sign you off on a sheet on the sheet before you leave the building so we can keep um, track of all the gifts and who's responsible for them. Thanks so much. And park your passport. Thanks for all What's that? Yes. Yeah, tape it to the gift. So we know what the, who the gift is for. The name is on the tag you'll be taking with you. Yes, they need okay, to be wrapped it. and I'll take them off. One, one more thing. I mean, I, I understand not all of us have abundant funds too, so there is a newborn baby and there's never um, too many wipes or diapers that can be provided where that's concerned, so. Thanks, thanks, honey. Um, Carolyn. Come on up here. Carolyn's got a little announcement as well about a really fun activity that's coming up too. Yeah, this one is so much fun. I was thinking, oh, I love downtown Parker. I love Indochine restaurant, right? I have not been, but I've always wanted to go to that little bar on the corner for a glass of wine. They have a store where everything is made in Colorado, and a little boutique and another little shop. There's only like three or four stores in downtown Parker, but they're really cool stores. And so my idea of shopping doesn't take more than an hour or two. So our plan is at 11.15, Saturday, December 3rd, we're going to go to Indochine restaurant for lunch. We're going to, <coughs> at 11.30, I'm sorry. We're going to go to Indochine restaurant for lunch. We're going to do a little bit of shopping and then meet up at the bar for a beverage <laughs> of your choice. Doesn't that sound like fun? We have little cards that say, you made my day with CSL Parker so that we can let the merchants of Parker know that we are here and that we are supporting them. So one of the ways that we can give back is to support our community and, and let them know that we're here. So call me, I mean, contact me after the service and I will send you email. I need to know if I had to let Indochine know that we're going to bombard their restaurant. <laughs> and so just get, let me get it with me. Yes. It's, oh yeah, it is, a, I'm sorry, it is Tuesday, not Saturday. We wanted to go in the middle of the week. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Tuesday the 3rd. 
Um, and last but not least, today is our thanks sharing celebration. Um, so be sure, if you have time, we'd love for you to stay and join us for something to eat after service. Um, and if there are leftovers, we're encouraging folks to take leftovers home with them and share them with your family or a neighbor or someone who might um, be needing a little lift um, with um, some lovely food that has been prepared uh, so generously and so also lovingly by our congregants. So thank you for that. I think I'm done. And oh, Felina is our practitioner on duty today. She'll do our reading and our prayer. Yes. Ma'am? Good morning. OK. So the reading this morning is from Paul Farini. And because this is all about Gratitude Month, just a little couple of things from him to share. Gratitude is a state of consciousness. We cultivate gratitude when we feel grateful for the gift of life and appreciate all the good things that people do for us. We do not take what we have for granted, but value all the ways that the universe supports us and ensures that our needs are being met. Gratitude leads to abundance. We all want that in one way or another. It creates connection and reciprocity. It enables us to celebrate life together. And on the other hand, a lack of gratitude leads to a lack of joy, a lack of trust, a lack of energy, and a lack of prosperity. So expressing gratitude is prayer in action. Thanking God, thanking God for its blessings and its bounty every day and helps you stay connected to your higher power and aware of its presence in your life. So please pray with me. And this is a prayer of gratitude. Mm -hmm. I know that there is one creator, one heavenly present presence, one all-encompassing source that is beyond my comprehension but is embedded in my heart. We are all a part of this source. We can tap into it at any time. The energy from source is so great. I love that experience. And I realize that we are here in this fantastic little church of ours whose philosophy has changed my life. I am so grateful for the journey that I have taken to my own consciousness of this source. I am grateful for all of you. I feel your love. I feel your compassion. I feel your warmth. And I bless all of you for being who you are. I'm so grateful for this. And I realize that this little church is going to grow and grow in consciousness.
and have its existence rooted here in Parker as we reach out to the community and let the community see us. I'm so thankful. This is the time and the season to be thankful. Please join me in saying, and so it is. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude. this opportunity to breathe deeply into the center of our being and invite the recognition, the revelation of the divine presence that is the very essence of each and every one of us. Whether you call that God, whether you call it God, life itself, universe, source, higher self, the I am presence, it is right here, right now living itself as yourself in this moment. And this moment is our opportunity to awaken to that life, to let everything else go, any doubt, any fear, any worry, as much as we possibly can let go. I just invite you to breathe in and breathe it all the way down through the bottom of your feet, allowing that energy to be released and inviting the energy of our Mother Earth to transmute that energy, releasing that energy back into love. And so in this moment, we open ourselves to the realization that that life is the very life that each of us is. 
And in that recognition, in that realization, right here in the center of our being, we know our truth. And we are filled with the awareness in our hearts and our minds and every cell of our bodies, any fiber of our being. We're filled with the awareness that that divine life is having its life in its fullness as each of us. And we're filled with that. And it's in that awareness that we experience the great fullness of spirit, the great fullness of life. And what arises in that is this felt energy, this experience of gratitude that we experience in our humanness, gratitude in this moment, gratitude for this moment, gratitude for our willingness to open to receive it and to know it and to claim it and to be it. Gratitude. Gratitude for everything now. Gratitude for everything that has been. Gratitude before us, behind us, to the left of us, to the right of us, above us and below us, within us and all around us. Because what we know is it's energy that flows from our hearts. It's a vibration that flows from our consciousness of great fullness. And so as we breathe into it, I just invite you to feel that energy. Claim it, know it, embody it. Great fullness of life itself. Living its fullness as you. In body and mind and spirit. Ah, so we just breathe into it. Yeah, so I want to invite you again to stand as we, some of us did this last week, but to stand if you're willing and able as we move this energy, as we feel the energy, as we use our hands to move the energy. Just imagine that great fullness and gratitude flowing from your heart, flowing out and behind you and to the left of you, to the right of you, and above you and below you and within you and all around you. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude. Just take a deep breath. Really feel that gratitude arising within you. Feel the gratefulness. Feel the gratitude for yourself. 
for all that you be, all that you are, all that is the very essence of you. Feel yourself enfolded in that energy. And feel that energy grounding you right here, right now. Feeling great fullness and gratitude for all that is. And let us proclaim together as we say, and so it is. Thank you.
Thank you, Laura. Thank you, John and Harry. I felt it, did you? Yeah. Don't you want to stand up and say amen to that? Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. Um, so the past few months, uh, I don't remember exactly how long it's been, I've been participating in a mastermind group. Some of you are familiar with mastermind groups, some of you may not be, but it's a group of people who get together and there's a mastermind prayer process that you can go through. Um, so I've been doing that with a, a unity minister and a couple of science of mind practitioners and uh, 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 somebody else who's been in New Thought for quite a while. And so Friday, and what, let me just preface this for a moment. I just want you to know I'm not making any political commentary here. I'm just sharing with you. In our session on Friday morning, uh, one of the people participants said, you know, we were talking about, we kind of check in. And she said, I have to be honest with you all, and I really feel kind of bad about being honest with you all, so I'm really going through this existential crisis right now. A person who's been in New Thought for a very long time. She said, I look around and I see what happened in the election and I look around and I see our centers and churches that are failing. My life is not f flowing the way I think it should flow, the way I want it to flow. I've been practicing, I've been praying, I've been doing my mind treatments, I've been doing all this stuff and nothing is happening. How can the world, how can my life, how can the world really be in this situation if this stuff really works? She said, I don't even necessarily I believe in God anymore. But if this stuff really works, why is it not working? Why are we seeing CSL, the Centers for Spiritual Living, closing the Holmes Institute because they don't have enough money? Why are we seeing CSL as an organization asking their employees to take a pay cut? Why are, they, why are we seeing these things happening in our movement if this stuff really works? Anybody else have that sort of? I'm not asking you to, I'm not asking you to raise your hand. She's like, I just, I'm just in this really tough place. And of course, I was listening to that and I was going, oh, crap. How am I, how am I going to respond to this? You know, how am I? And I, you go, what comes up for me, and I'm guessing for some of us, is that I just want to make it better. I want to make help her feel better. I want to give her the right answer. I'm supposed to be a minister. I should have the right answers, right? And so... I, you know, I, I just, <laughs> I said, okay, well, Karen, you take this one because I, I don't really know. How to. Karen is a unity minister as part of our group. And so, you know, what I recognize is that, yeah, my, my, my need to fix and what I recognized and what I said to her was that, you know, I hear you. I think our first response, my first response is wanting to fix, wanting to make it better. We want, it, we want people to feel good. But what I've learned about that from my experience is that what really is more helpful is empathy. I hear you. And I hear that you're in a painful place. And I'm hearing that there's some fear arising for you about what's going on in the world. And I'm hearing that you're not comfortable, that you're really feeling a lot of uh, worry and doubt and just questioning. And I feel that and, and I want you to know you're not alone. You're not alone. You know, that there are many people who are, who are in this movement who are questioning maybe some of the same things. What are we doing? What's going on? There are many people, you know, that are questioning what's going on in the world around us. And many people who are questioning too, what's going on in my own life? Why am I experiencing the things that I'm experiencing if this stuff really works? And so 
I, I started with just, you know, just empathy. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. And allow your humanness to be human. Allow your humanness to be human. Allow whatever's going on for you just to go through you, to move through you. Feel it, experience it, move through it. That's what I would, that's what I would recommend for anyone who's feeling that. And I'm not suggesting if we're feeling that kind of uh, despair in a way that we can immediately jump to gratitude. I'm not suggesting that at all. I think there, is, there are steps to that. But what I, what I would say to her is that feel that and recognize that when we are... What, what I want to believe about what's going on in our movement and in the world and in many different situations is this. That spirit is calling us for more. Spirit is calling to us for more of us. Spirit is calling to, for us to be more love in the world. Spirit is calling us, I said, question everything. I would say to anybody, question everything that you believe, everything. Even if it's science of mind, even if it's unity, new thought, whatever. Don't be so attached to what you believe to be true because there's always more. There's always more of spirit. There's always more to know. There's always more to learn. There's always more to experience, always. I don't believe Ernest Holmes. I don't believe Charles or Myrtle Fillmore. I don't believe, may, may, well, may, maybe Mary Baker Eddy, but uh, Emma Curtis Hopkins <laughs> would not ask us to stop learning, to stop growing, to stop expanding our movement and our learning and our experiencing of all this. So yes, this works. I believe it works. I believe prayer works. I believe our principles work or else I would not be standing up here today. But there's more. And so I believe spirit is asking us to open ourselves up to what is more. Not be attached to what has been. Because maybe what has been is not serving. Maybe what has been, even in the CSL movement, is no longer serving us. And our attachment to it is only creating our own angst. What if Spirit is saying, you got to let go of this so that something even better can be born? Not only in our movement, Maybe in our country, maybe in the world, I don't know. Maybe in my own life. <laughs> yeah? What do I need to let go of? What am I attaching myself to that I feel so much worry and doubt and fear if I let go of it? What's going to happen? Well, what if? What if it's amazing? What if it is something that is being birthed in my life, in the CSL movement, in the country, in the world, that is going to be something that is amazing? And what I, you know, obviously I've never given birth, but, <laughs> not physically anyway, but I understand it's not, it's not, it's, it's painful. And it's messy. I don't like painful and messy. But maybe it is. Maybe, maybe that's what we're going through. Maybe that is what we are being called to. Calling us up to something different, something better. To be better versions of ourselves. To not throw the baby out with the bathwater, but what I'm saying is if we believe this stuff works, let's practice this stuff. Let's recommit ourselves, reignite our passion for what we believe is true, and practice it. 
can we get into that place of, I said, it's a big leap to go from there to gratitude. But what if, what if this stuff is working? What if what we teach is working perfectly? What if? What if can we be grateful for, wow, isn't it amazing that the consciousness of our humanity has, has brought forth, manifested exactly what is showing up in the world today? What if? That's what we teach, isn't it? So if you don't like it, what are you going to do about it? You going to sit around and bitch about it? You going to try to sit around and find who's at fault about it? Yeah, a lot of us want to do that, don't we? We want to complain about it. We want to find out who's at fault. We want to blame it on somebody else. Well, guess what? It ain't nobody else's problem. It's nobody else can do it for you. Nobody else can do it for you or me. We are the ones that get to change our minds. We are the ones that get to come back to our principles. We are the ones that get to practice prayer. We are the ones that get to reignite that energy of love within us. I'm saying, and I want to say once again, I'm not suggesting if you're in despair that you make that quantum leap into gratitude. But I believe it's possible. And what we teach is that it's, it's thought, it begins in thought, it begins in consciousness in our minds. That everything that is manifest begins in consciousness. And if it begins in consciousness, where is your consciousness? What consciousness are you Projecting and what seeds of thought are you planting in the, in the mind of God, in that creative medium? That's what we as practitioners, and I know we're not all licensed practitioners, but practitioners of science of mind get to do individually. And hopefully, collectively, we get to choose. What is it that we want to experience? And as we talk about, the, the Jesus said, giving thanks before it even manifests. Giving thanks before we even see the evidence of it. Faith. Faith. And so many of you know, if you, many of you may not know, that we teach this five-step prayer model, this uh, spiritual mind treatment. What a beautiful practice that we can engage in as practitioners of science of mind. Where we recognize, we know that there is only one power, one Are we giving the power to fear? Are we or saying fear has power? Are we saying our doubts and worries, what are we giving power to? Is there only one power and do we really believe it? Do we? Believe there's only love? That love is truly the only power? And do we believe that we are very essence of that? We are that. So we recognize there's only one. We unify with that one as that one. Love. I'm going to call it love. And then we get to that place where we just, as we were doing in our meditation, realizing that truth, embodying that truth. And I know it's a process. I get it. It's not always easy. We have to remove our focus temporarily from the condition, whatever that condition is. Using the CSL 
organization and what the organization is going through right now. And we move, remove our focus. We know there's only one power. We know it's love. We know that power is existing and moving and acting and living itself perfectly. And we know that all of us are one with that. I am one with that. And I can get to that place where I just fully embody that. And then, as I talked about, when gratitude is when you, God recognizes itself, God realizes itself in your consciousness and in my consciousness. And then gratitude arises. So can we get to that place and feel the gratitude and express the gratitude. How, what would that be for us? When we look at the, look at, I'm just gonna use CSL. We're closing Holmes Institute. We may not be publishing Science in My Magazine. We haven't sold the building. Things are, look like they're going to hell in a handbasket. If we look at the condition. Let's don't look at the condition. Remove our focus from the condition and know the truth. That there is one, that one is in and as each of us, that one is acting through us, and we can come into gratitude. I'm grateful for this teaching. I'm grateful for the philosophy of science of mind. I'm grateful for that science of mind philosophy is getting spread out into the world. I am grateful for all of the people who came before me. I'm grateful for knowing the truth. I'm grateful for how it's transformed my life. I'm grateful for how I can apply it. I'm grateful for this prayer process. I'm grateful for all of the people who are working now to continue the process of moving forward with Science of Mind magazine. I'm grateful for those who had the vision. I'm grateful for all that is moving, all that is, all that is unfolding. I'm grateful, even though I don't see it right now, I'm grateful for how it's going to unfold and something new is going to be born. And I see it and I claim it and I know it and I know in spirit, in the unification, in the wholeness of spirit, it is already done. And I'm grateful for that. And can I be grateful? Can I just Feel the gratefulness and the gratitude and express that and connect with that. And do you see how that changes your consciousness? And when we plant the seed of that into our consciousness and we trust that the creative medium, the universe, acts upon that, then imagine what we can create. Imagine what we can create not just in our movement, in our country, in the world. I'm grateful that this country has the leaders that care and are concerned about the well-being of people. I am grateful that our organization is healthy and whole. I'm grateful that people are being cared for. I'm grateful that people are being care can taken care of. I'm grateful for the abundance that we enjoy, the freedom that we enjoy. I'm so grateful. Whatever we can find to be grateful for, express it and live it and claim it. And believe me, I know that those doubts want to come in. Oh, well, what if, what if, what if? Because it happens for me every day. Every day. Well, what if? Well, I get into a little fear. Well, I, 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 the mind just wants to go. But see, it's mind treatment. You're treating your mind, your thoughts, your consciousness. And can we treat it with gratitude? <clears throat> yes. Yeah? Yes. Can we? Yes. Are we willing? Yes. Are we willing yes. to practice what we preach? Yeah? to truly have that energy. And when that energy goes out into the world, it affects everything, everything. And so, yeah, I get it that we have, maybe have this existential angst about my life, the world, what's going on, and, and feel it, be it, be with it, question it, question it. Open up to what a spirit is calling us to. And as much as we possibly can, you know, as Dr. Holmes talks about, 
you know, release the doubt, release the fear. Prepare that soil to receive those thoughts of gratitude and appreciation so that that is what comes forth. That is what we, we harvest. And in that harvest of all of that good, we can easily relax into gratitude. Yeah? You with me? Yes. yes. And we say yes? So it is. Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. Does it work? Yes. It works if you work it, as we say in 12 Steps. It works if you work it. Yeah? So let's take a moment, breathe into that. Take a moment and just breathe into your place of knowing that there is that one power, one presence, one love, one life. And allowing the awareness that that life is living itself as you. You, this moment. Breathing into the realization of that, the truth of that, feel it alive in your body. And as you feel that, just imagine that Gratitude arises in you. And whatever you might be working through, whatever you might be questioning, whatever might be going on in your life, see if gratitude can arise in this moment with thoughts, feelings. I am grateful. I am grateful right now in this moment. I may not be able to see the manifestation of it right now, but I know as I share my gratitude, as Jesus taught, I give thanks now for what I am holding as the truth. I give thanks now for my vision, for my desire, for what is unfolding in this moment in spirit. I choose to see it now. And in the knowing of it now, I know, I trust, I am confident that it is done in spirit. And as I open more fully and completely to the working of that life within me as me, that which I am envisioning right here, right now, the vision that is given to me by spirit, I step into, I open up to receive it in its manifested form. I am grateful, so grateful. And in that knowing, I am free just to release it, let it go. Let it go. I don't need to hold on to it. I don't need to try to make it happen. I trust and I know that spirit is at work. Love is doing its perfect work. And I can relax. I can let go and I can let love. And so breathe into that. For those of you who might be new to science of mind, we close our mind treatments, our prayers, by saying and affirming, and so it is. It's, it's much like amen, but it's making it firm. It's making it firm now. It is now so. And so that is the energy that we project, the energy that we claim as we say, and so it is. And so I invite you to join with me now and proclaim together, and so it is. Thank you. So now is the time in our service where we do have the opportunity to give from our good, we knowing that it's all expressions of love. And just a reminder that the cards, the uh, Celebrating Abundance cards are there if you would like to put that in the basket as they come around. Again, it's, uh, it's a gift that we know that you're giving from your heart. So as you take what you're going to share today, I invite you to hold it in your heart. If you've given in other ways, just hold that in your mind and in your heart as we come together in the awareness of that energy that is flowing through us, that everything is a gift of love. So we celebrate our willingness to attune to that love, to align to that love, to be the vessels through which that love flows as these gifts and offerings this morning. We know that we are blessed as we receive and we are equally blessed as we give. And again, let us proclaim, and so it is.
but with no guarantee. Too much time in my own mind. Too much time moving straight ahead. They say there's a source within me I can turn to instead. I put my hopes down. Save them for a rainy day. The sun is shining. So why for all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I invite you to stand again, if you're willing and able, as we come together and first of all, bless the offering that we receive today. We're so grateful for all these gifts and offerings that we receive as expressions of your love. We know that we are blessed. We are so grateful. And for all of these abundance cards that we have received, I invite you all just to know that we are here as community that we come together, that we are here as expressions of that divine light and that divine love, and that we're here as a beacon to this community, to this city, to the state, to the world, as we come together. And so your love that is expressed through your gifts, 
through your financial contributions that allow us to share this message and to grow in this message and to teach these principles, these life-changing, life-affirming principles that we are all blessed as we co-create this center, the center of spiritual living, Parker. And so we are grateful, we are blessed, we are abundance in manifestation. And we are so grateful, so grateful. And let us claim together, and so it is. Now let's sing, stand. to take is blessed, already blessed, with your hands, with your love, with your expressions, and we know that our bodies take it in as love, assimilate it as love, and express it as love, and we are blessed and grateful, and so yeah.